Um, yeah, so this is actually a topic I'm, I'm quite passionate about. Um, I can't even begin to explain the number of hours or even days that I've spent writing queries and you know starting new projects, trying to understand what data exists. Um, how do I join these two tables together? What is the right way to form these queries? Are there any gotchas that exist within the data that I should be aware of? Maybe when a product was first launched, there were a bunch of null values, maybe a new field was added. Um, what is important with this table to understand as it exists right now? Um, and so there's just like a lot of things that inherently come through queries that we would like to be able to present through Amundsen. Um, so jumping right into it, when I think about how Amazon is trying to augment the data discovery lifecycle, and I put myself into the shoes of an analyst or a data scientist who was trying to use data to solve a problem, I, I think about the six fundamental questions, who, what, when, where, why, and how. Um, there's a lot of different flavors of these questions and each project the user works on may or may not involve answering all of these questions or re-answering some of them. But when it comes to Amazon's ability to be a tool for comprehensive data discovery, I think there's still a few areas where it is currently stronger than others. So the questions of what and where are really its bread and butter. These are the ones that everyone sees when you first come into Amazon, you're searching, you're exploring, you're using the data, you're looking at tables really as like that first interaction. Uh, and you get this really strong and positive experience around what and where the data is. Um, there's also a couple of really good and well curated features around the questions of who and when, who are my users, who are the owners, um, how can I get in contact with these people if I need to learn more, maybe there's some questions that I cannot get self service from within Amazon. Uh, Amazon really supports that workflow where you can get the additional information very quickly. Um, and, and the question in terms of when uh, there's a couple of, of data pipeline integrations that have been built, you can look directly within airflow you can hop over to your your DAGs there and see how they're, they're processing. But the areas of why and how are, are potential places that I think um, there could be a little more investment. Um, and in particular, this is what I'm looking at right now. So you know, once a data practitioner understands how to access the data, the task of actually using that data can become daunting. Um, and so the feature I'm talking about today, query intelligence, aims to augment the user's understanding of how the data is being used by providing historical examples to users, which can be utilized as a starting point during that research phase or as a reference during development. So as seen at the top here, search and discovery capabilities are at the core of Amazon's offering. Um, you know, some of the top class items that we see are tables, dashboards, users. Soon there's going to be features as well. Um, and at the bottom here, there's also prior work for surfacing queries and how they are used with dashboards. Uh, this is really, you know, an inspirational point for building out some of this feature as we start to think about what are the additional capabilities we'd like to have on this that builds a more comprehensive set uh, of, of user experience and tools within Amazon. So how do we help Amazon answer the question of why, I'm sorry, answer the question of how with query intelligence? Um, SQL is the language that is used to interact with structured data. Uh, now, similarly, we could consider Python, JavaScript, Go, and other languages as the languages that are used to create the data. And generally, they can also be considered as being areas where you know, code is well documented. Um, each of these has API references and libraries that have function level documentation. There's often developer or community provided examples. So how do we bring the same application to the underlying data itself, which can oftentimes be much more complex than the code that is used to create it. Uh, the query intelligence feature within Amazon aims to provide this level of context uh, with, with asking the question, you know, how do I use this data? So Amazon is really adding building blocks right now where we're starting to think about what are the underlying components of a query that we should be considering to index. Um, so we're thinking about like the query itself is one. Um, there's where's, which can be considered as filters or joins. How do I join two particular tables or columns together? Um, and we can use this to start to abstract away discovery tasks around how and why. Um, so we could consider even a future where Amazon helps users to discover how can I find high term users for my product? This may mean something where Amazon needs to realize there's four or five tables that need to be joined 
before you can reference that back to your product table. Um, and so this just enables the building blocks again, which allow for much greater um, and much more abstract questions to be answered within Amazon. Okay, so I'm gonna jump really quickly into a live demo. Um, everything we're going to see here is currently in flight. There's a couple of PRs that are currently out there. Um, and once these are all merged, everything we're seeing will be in the open source version. Uh, the first thing that you'll notice here that's new is going to be we have this common join section. So for this particular table, we can see it, it's joined on uh, its column one. Uh, on this other table, uh, test view one. Now we, it has a couple of joins here, one of which is an inner join and one of which is in left outer join. So as a user, I'm starting to see, okay, the cardinality of this data may actually be a little bit different. There's a couple of scenarios where I need to consider how am I interacting with this particular table. We can also jump directly into this table from here if I wanna continue my discovery life cycle. So as I jump into test view, now we can see again, I have those same queries here but there's also one and two. There's also another table that it's joined on. So now I'm starting to think, okay, there's relationships that I can build that are more than one table. I can continue to join so, or, or chain some of these joins together and build a much larger cardinality or, or a much larger fact table if I need to. Um, the common filters are gonna be down below. And so we're just seeing here, pretty basic sort of, of where clauses that have been added to the table. You know, Things I might wanna consider where column one is not null, where it's greater than three. Um, these are really free form, so it's, it's as complicated or as simplistic as, as you would like to make it. Okay, so how does Amazon index the individual query components? The biggest change here is we're, we're taking this query object in the middle and we're really making it uh, about as close to a first class representative model within Amazon as we can. And there's a couple of, of components that we're adding to it. Um, the first one is gonna be the join. So joins within Amazon will always be between two columns. Um, we have similarly, we have a where clause. A where is between one or more columns. There can be n number of columns that are associated to a where clause. Um, you could think about this as you know, four, five, or six tables have their own columns and you're having one where clause that can potentially compares all of them, uh, in particular, if you're doing some arithmetic and then some comparison on top of it as well. Uh, and then one of the most important new models that we're adding to this is the query execution count. And this is really gonna be an important concept because this is what enables relevancy over time for the query objects within Amazon. So uh, if we have a particular query that is run three or four times a day, the query execution counts are gonna summarize the number of times that it's counted, or sorry, that it's executed uh, within the hour or the day or, or some temporal range. And then we can simply add more execution counts and we can remove execution counts as they expire to keep the information about this query relevant as of right now. And because we have the information about the joins and the where's related to a query, we can then infer what is the execution count and the relevance of this where clause and this join based off of right now and today. So a lot of this is gonna take query parsing uh, and frankly speaking, it's kind of a tough thing to do. So the design and the implementation of this was intended to make it as simplistic as possible and that you do not need to do full query parsing to really take advantage of these features. Maybe there's some light query parsing you want to do in your query logs. Maybe you feel like there's a couple of tables that are really high important, high value for you, and you wanna just statically add some of them from Data Builder. Uh, you can do that as well. So as much as the complexity that we saw that comes with the query executions and the relationships through the query can sort of be removed if needed uh, in order to just have like a more static and a more stable version of the queries and the joins and the where's that you have uh, within your Amazon instance. Um, so how do we create these query components? I'm gonna jump into the PR that is currently open to give an example of what this looks like. Um, there's been two extractors, one base query metadata extractor and one JSON query metadata extractor. Um, they're both very similar. The JSON query metadata extractor simply inherits from the other one. Uh, and it takes in a JSON file with some of the query components. And the structure of this, as you can see, is intended again to be as simple as possible. So we have the SQL 
uh, we have this form of clean SQL, which, for example, as you can see here, if we're running this within Airflow every single day, we may not want to create a brand new SQL query object within Amazon. So we could potentially strip this where clause and we could just keep this clean SQL um, as that base query object. Again, most of this being optional, it's not needed to be required. Um, and then again, we have the, the tables, the where's and the joins that are gonna be associated to a particular query. Um, each of these, again, just to repeat is, is optional. So you can provide as much or as little uh, as you would like to, to take advantage. So in order to create a table, it's simply a reference to the existing table metadata. Um, if you've ever used some of the, the sample creators or the CSV, you'll probably you know, notice some of these objects and these keys are, are very familiar. Um, once we get into the query where's, they're, they're slightly more complicated. We simply need to reference the tables and in particular the columns that they're joined to. And then we can provide some additional metadata on top. What is the where clause? What are the left arguments, the right arguments, the operators, et cetera. Um, and then finally, the joins. Uh, these are just going to be a left table and a right table, and then the operator for that join itself. And so if you wanted to, um, to create a very, very simplistic version, uh, you could have uh, a where object that you send in, as this is your entire query metadata. Um, and this will simply put that where clause, as we saw, directly into Amundsen. Um, or with the joins, you can just have a single, singular join object. Um, and that is it. So there's a couple of PRs. I'm going to make sure we have this updated. So when we send out this link to everybody, you'll be able to look at them. Um, the ideal date, I think, for some of these metadata and front end changes is that they will be landing early to mid next week. Um, but I'll certainly make a post into the overall chat just to touch base on this uh, once everything uh, is upstream. So I'll pause there and open it up for any questions or comments.